like to go fishing? I like fishing. I find it therapeutic. Go out on a boat, fish. I don't have much chance to do that in downtown Brooklyn. There's not a whole lot of fishing possibilities, but you can travel a little bit and fish. I have a grandson named Levi. He'd rather fish than swim in a pool. He loves to fish. And that reminds us that Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. You're not going to catch fish. Peter, James, John, those days are behind you. Now you're going to catch people from me in love with the gospel. Do you realize that that's the main reason why we're still here on earth? The Lord has saved us. We're going to be in heaven one day, aren't we? Yes. Well, why aren't we there now? Why, why, why are we still here on earth? If he wants to take us home, let's get on with it. A lot of battles to fight here, temptation and all of that. Well, he wants us to worship him. No, we, w we should worship him. But when we get to heaven, now we're going to talk serious worship. We're going to see him face to face. Read in Revelation about their worship. We're just playing at it the best we do down here. No, no, I got, I got to get deeper in the Word. We need to study the Word of God. I love to study God's Word. But when we get to heaven, then we'll know everything. Now, no matter how much you study, we see through a glass darkly. The main reason we're here is to be fishing. Listen to what Paul says to Timothy, a younger ministry, talking about these difficult last days that he predicted will come. They will turn their ears away from the truth the people, and turn aside to myths, made-up stuff. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. Do the work of an evangelist. Now, in fact, Timothy was not an evangelist. doesn't say to be an evangelist. Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. He was a pastor at this moment, but he said, do the work of an evangelist. Every church must have its eyes out on the world, the world around it. Remember what Jesus said, look, open your eyes, not these, the eyes of your heart. And see, the, the fields are ripe unto harvest, but the laborers are few. There's too few people who want to fish, who want to reap the harvest, to use the original analogy. That's the main reason we're here. There'll be no soul winning in heaven. Then it's over. Finito. Gone. So now our churches have to be soul saving stations. How much time, effort, prayer, discussion do we give? Do you give? Do I give? Among leadership and staff. How can we reach the multitudes with the gospel? How can we equip our people to be soul winners? Do we talk about that? Do we hold that up before them? Because that's the main reason our, our churches are still here on earth. We're the golden lampstands that give out light, light for the people who live in darkness, to come out of darkness into light. So now this brings us to the fact that we're to share the gospel. This is the tool God gave us. You know, uh, Romans chapter 1. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it, the gospel, is the power of God. So now I have an assignment for you that I want to give you. Seriously. If, if you're interested in something that meant a lot to me, uh, maybe try it on for size. Read Acts 2 and study every word Peter preached as he shared the gospel, the good news. Analyze every sentence, subject, object, the verb in between. What did he say? What did he not say? He preaches again in Acts 3, then in Acts 10 at Cornelius' house. Then Paul in Acts 13 is in a synagogue on his uh, first missionary journey, and he stands up and shares the good news. Then again in Acts 21, 22, when they try to kill him in Jerusalem. Look for those places in the book of Acts where they preach the gospel. Is that what you and I say? Or have we added to it or subtracted? See, sin isn't too strong 
Demonic powers aren't too much. In a lot of cases, we've gotten away from the gospel. And we bought into an American gospel, prosperity gospel, white southern gospel, conservative gospel, black gospel, whatever, ethnic, cultural gospel. And the moment you add something to the gospel, you weaken its power. It's like a good spaghetti sauce. The minute you start throwing stuff in there that don't belong, it's not the same sauce. Likewise, you take out things that need to be in there. It's not the same sauce. It's not going to taste the same. That's why Paul is talking already in his day, imagine today, about beware of those who preach another gospel. Well, wait a minute. They're saying Jesus. Yeah, but it's not the Jesus I told you about. I know, but they talk about uh, the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. I know, but it's not the Spirit I talked to you about. It's another gospel. And unfortunately, the people are being seduced by it. So why we need to study that is to get clear of our own upbringing, our cultural upbringing. You know, I was raised a certain way in church. I heard guys preach. And I, well, that must be the gospel. Why? Because I'm 10 years old and they're preaching. It must be the gospel. I didn't find it out by critical study of the word of God. And, you know, Charles Finney said, the sad thing is that most people start in the ministry or most Christians, and 20 years later, they don't believe one-tenth of an inch away from what they originally believed because born in this way, going to die this way. Church tradition, denominational messages, they have more sway than what the Word of God actually says. So think of all the other Gospels that we have today where we dissipate the true gospel's power and we see so few conversions. Come on, you and I know. Pastor, look, real talk. The hardest thing is to make a convert. Not teach a series on the Song of Solomon. Anybody can do that. Might not be good, but anybody can do it. It's not uh, building a building or uh, getting a, a new fog machine for the praise and worship. Anybody can do that. But to win a soul, someone born again, that's what the angels rejoice over, one person getting converted. They don't rejoice when we have deep Bible studies, although that's important. Or when we sing and praise God, that's so important. But the Bible never says they rejoice at that. But one person coming to Christ, just uno, one, and they rejoice in heaven. When one prodigal comes home, when one person comes from darkness to light, but that happens when we use the tool God has given us, the true gospel. John 3, 16, and that, no, don't even believe me. Read what I said. Read what Peter preached. You'll notice that a lot of things we talk about, he never mentions. Like, take, for example, join my church gospel. Now, here at the end of the service, would you come forward to receive the right hand of fellowship and join our church along with believing in Christ? That's nowhere found in the Bible. I, I have the Bible here. Nowhere does it say that. Join our church. Never. Uh, our denomination has been raised up by God. Now you've added something. Sorry, you've added something. Now there's no denomination talked about here. Never mentioned. But uh, our Pentecostal distinctives never mentioned in the Bible when they preach the gospel. You want to talk about the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12 and 14? That's important to talk about, but it's not the gospel message to unbelievers. Five-point Calvinism, I'm going to die by it. I, listen, hold whatever you want to hold, but that's not the gospel. I have the gospel here. Simple fishermen and, and new converts even preached it. And deacons went out and God bore fruit. Ethnic, racial, black gospel, white gospel, southern gospel, prosperity gospel. If you believe in Jesus, you're going to be driving a bigger car and you'll never get sick and all that nonsense that is you see on so much on Christian television. It's not the gospel. But this gospel has power to save. It has power to save. You know, Paul talks about it in one sentence here. Let me just, I feel impressed here to just turn to it and give it to you. It's found in Acts 20 when he's making his last talk to the Ephesian elders and he's telling them about, you remember what, how I was when I was among you and uh, you're never going to see me again. But just remember, 
that my gospel came to you, I've declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. There you go. That's another thing that's been taken away. Don't mention sin and call people to repent. Just believe on Jesus. That is not the gospel that Paul preached. He preached to everyone, Gentiles and Jews. Nobody can be saved any other way but by the gospel. And what is that gospel? Turn from sin and selfishness and your lifestyle that offends God and just turn and reach out your hand and receive the gift of salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. Come on, let's purpose in our heart today. We're gonna to be gospel preaching churches, soul saving stations. Let's baptize so many people our arms get tired or if you sprinkle, we run out of water or whatever. But let's see lives transformed by the power of Jesus Christ through the good news of our Savior. Amen.